This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at iOS 9, which is available for many iPad models and quite a few iPhone models, from the iPhone 4S and newer, and for the iPad, it's the iPad 2 and newer, not iPad Air 2, but iPad 2, and all the iPad minis. If you have an iPod Touch, you get the fifth generation or the sixth generation, then you can get the upgrade. Now, we're going to mostly be using the iPad to show you because it has the bigger screen, and because, well, soon enough, just in another week, you're going to be seeing a whole lot of iOS 9 on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus that so we'll be reviewing. I mean, well, we're going to dig in now and see what the new features are. All right, we have iOS 9 running on the iPad Air 2. Now, you don't have to have the latest, greatest model to get iOS 9. As I mentioned, supports quite a few different older models. But one thing that you do need an iPad Air 2 for, or the iPad Pro that hasn't come out yet, is the split-screen multitasking. And we'll show you what we mean by that. Not, not the, the little sidebar version, but the full side-by-side. -side. Since we are on an iPad, this is where multitasking is available, and it makes a whole lot of sense. We're going to start off with that. So we're going to open up Safari here and say I want to take some notes on, on what I'm reading here. So you swipe in from the side and you get this little pull bar. And here you can see I have one note right here in case I want to take notes in one note. There's a little grab handle over here. So you can switch and choose from a variety of applications. Now one thing that I notice is most applications are available but not all of them. For example, the games I have installed on here are not showing up in this list. And Pages isn't, which I do sometimes use for word processing on the iPad. And if you start off with Pages in the main screen and then try to switch to Safari, you, you can do this ribbon style over here, but you can't do the split screen. I'm going to show you in a minute. So we're going to go back to OneNote over here. So say I want OneNote to be bigger, because right now I can interact with OneNote, but I can't do anything with the web browser screen. But if you bring it over like so, and you can do a 50-50 or a 33-66 kind of split, now I can actually interact with both screens at once. So in a lot of ways, I would call iOS 9 the Androidification of iOS in, in good ways, bringing some of this stuff that we see it's been standard on Android, and in this case, something that we've seen on some Samsung Galaxy Tab models for quite some time, the split-screen multitasking. It works pretty well. I actually think this is a pretty brilliant view, because you do have enough real estate here for doing reference, say, if you're doing social networking over here, you want to look at some photos, that sort of thing. So that is pretty cool stuff right there. So that's multitasking on the iPad Air 2. Now, if you have an older iPad, you can get this side view right here. You just don't get the ability to do the split-screening. It has to do with how much processor intensive stuff is going on to do this sort of multitasking. Even notifications have gotten a little upgrade here. Notice when I pull that down, I've got my calendar stuff here and separate scrolling windows, and I've got other notifications over here. Cool beans, that's pretty nice. Now, search is this is where the Googleification is coming in in a way. You get a lot more information when you're doing search, and you can swipe this way or you can to search other ways. Now here it's going to show apps that I've used recently and some articles of interest in the news program that we'll visit in a minute. And you'll get context location stuff right here. And also this happens in maps. If you open up maps, you can choose to filter by shopping, gas, you know, restaurants, movies, that sort of thing. In fact, if I type in movies, it's going to figure out just like that, which is not on like Android. So location-based stuff, more location-based stuff that would make more sense, obviously, on our iPhone over here, because not as many people carry their iPad Air everywhere, but they do take their iPhone places. It knows if you're at work or if you're at home. It knows if you're driving, so you can actually tell it to do something once you've started driving. It can suggest different applications when you're doing a search based on whether you're home, say, playing music, versus if you're at work, where you more likely would be pulling up business applications. You can get stuff like your sports scores on here, too. It's pretty neat. You just type up Red Sox, and I did that in the search bar, and I get the latest Red Sox score, which is, as ever this year, been sad news. They did lose. So, lots more contextual information to save you time. Of course, we still have Siri available, our good old digital assistant here, and she works just as well as ever. Did the Red Sox win last night? The Red Sox lost in 13 innings to the Orioles yesterday. The final score was 5-6. to six. <sighs> What do you think of the iPhone 6S? The iPhone is the smartest phone out there. 
well, there you have it, Apple's opinion of the upcoming iPhone. So Siri supports more sorts of natural language queries than ever. That's supposed to be the, the big woohoo with Siri. It, it's a nice change right there. I, I think the contextual-based search is the more exciting stuff. The double-click to multitask is also changed. Now, this will spend more time showing you on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus because Force Touch actually figures in more prominently here as to how you're going to scroll through these things. But let's just get into pages right here and see how the keyboard has changed. Now, of course, with something like pages where you do have some editing tools available already right over there in this ribbon bar here, it's a little bit less relevant than if you're in some place that doesn't have it. But you've got some shortcuts here. You've got undo and redo. You've got quick clipboard and you've got bold italics underlined. So they're just improving the keyboard bit by bit. Also new is moving the cursor around, which sometimes can be difficult, mostly because, well, you know how it is. Your finger is kind of blocking your view when you do it. You can use two fingers anywhere, including on the keyboard, to move the cursor around. And it will speed up if you move more quickly. And you can use that for copy and paste selections as well. So pretty good idea, especially brilliant on something like the iPhone, because there your hand really does block your selection often enough when you're working on text. All well, new is power savings. Apple claims this can add an hour of runtime. Notice there's a low power mode available right here. Now this is on the iPhone, but not on our iPad back here. No such option for the iPads, just for the iPhone. So that's something we've seen also creeping into some other phones on other platforms, and it's good to see it here. Uh, Apple also claims better efficiency for the operating system and in better battery life overall. That remains to be seen. We'll have to use it a lot longer. The, the, the full release version has only been out a day so far of the operating system, so we'll get back to you on that as we use it more. Apple also claims better security than ever, but this is basically by making you use a six-digit rather than a four-digit passcode for your iCloud stuff and for everything else, Touch ID, you know, the backup numbers that most of the time you don't have to enter because you can use the fingerprint scanner. So, uh, they claim that that goes from a 10,001 to a million and one chance of actually figuring out your passcode. Meanwhile, there's picture in a picture video, another Samsung Galaxy favorite that's come here. Now, so far we found that this works with FaceTime and with Apple's own video player. It doesn't work with Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, or YouTube, so keep that in mind. So we've got a nice pretty video playing right here. And... There it is, still playing, a little window, it's resizable, and if I want to go into Safari, it's down in the corner. And I've got to make it full screen, I've got to pause, I've got to close, so we can go back to full screen right there. A little bit of a delay before it does it, but not too bad. So there you have it, little floating video player, also new. We get iCloud Drive as a separate application now, so you can actually peruse your content. That's, that's a very clever idea. Obviously, if Apple wants to compete with Microsoft's cloud system and everybody else's, you got to make it easy to use. Also new is the news application, and this is an attractive compendium of news sources. So here, the For You tab just takes a, a mishmash of all the sources I've chosen and throws them up here, and for favorites, you can see what you can choose here. It's really a huge selection, and one thing I'll tell you, when you first uh, launch it, it's going to ask you what you would like to include. Uh, keep scrolling and wait a little bit, because it takes a while for it to populate all these covers here. It just goes on and on and on. There is a whole lot of content available there, and that's pretty nice. And some of them usually have a paywall, so which is interesting to see. So I would assume that it's only the free articles, say, for something like the Wall Street Journal, which does have a paywall and a whole other articles there. I haven't seen any that are behind a paywall appearing mysteriously for free so far. And then we've got a search here, and you can save articles, and you can even have it notify you of new article as, as they come in in your inbox, which I've chosen not to do because we are going to get enough naggy notifications from our devices, don't we? And just to revisit Siri again for a minute, a natural language query, supposedly she's getting even better at recognizing voices. I, well, I have sort of announced her voice, so she usually doesn't have much of a problem with me, but I'll try something very casual. Where should I go eat for dinner tonight? Looking. Okay. Check it out. <laughs> so we get a bunch of food listings that are available nearby. 
Same thing with movies. If you say movies, she's going to give you a movie listings close by. You can use a whole lot of natural language queries here. I think that's one of the nicer things. So there you have it. There's iOS 9 in a nutshell for the iPhone and for the iPad. And we're using the iPad Air 2 and the iPhone 6 for this. Stay tuned for more content for those of you who are iThing fans coming up next week with the release of the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus.